Hello and welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Andrew Phelps. Joining us today is David Linthicum with the City of Raleigh Police Department in North Carolina. Today Dave will be talking to us about his thesis, Crossing the River, a Conceptual Framework for Response to Chaos. Thanks for being here, Dave. Thanks for having me, Andrew. So Dave, tell us what your impetus was for, for going down this path of, of discovery and research. Uh, I started examining emergency planning, uh, obviously first from a police standpoint. However, I started looking at other uh, emergency response agencies, how much time and effort is placed into planning, and then uh, during chaotic events, how perhaps ineffective the planning sometimes can be, and felt that uh, we need to leverage some of the emergent behavior of the, emerg of the responders as they uh, handle this chaotic event, whatever it may be, such as a 9-11, uh, uh, Oklahoma City uh, events such as that. David, you're a captain now in the police department, but uh, in, in your days as a patrolman or an officer, uh, was there anything that you drew on from those experiences of being the first line uh, boots on the ground that, that fed your thesis? I think all rem emergency responders, uh, frontline responders, understand, uh, I'd like to call it a general orders. They know what they're supposed to do. They know what the operating guidelines are, the frameworks what the mission should be, how they should achieve it. Uh, and quite often they do that without direct supervision. Uh, not to say that supervision is not important, but, but steps are taken in the absence of supervision that becomes highly effective. Uh, and I felt like uh, in the course of this research that perhaps we weren't leveraging that to the fullest extent that we can. The ideas, Dave, that you're proposing in your thesis um, could certainly have some pushback, both from leadership and the decision makers, and as well as uh, some pushback maybe from those frontline first responders who feel they need to, to put the accountability maybe for their actions off onto their supervisors. Did you address uh, combating uh, that pushback in your thesis? I did not dive into that uh, as a specific topic. Uh, however, I recognize that uh, what I'm proposing, the conceptual framework that has been proposed may be controversial, that there, there may in fact be some pushback. There may be some leaders who are absolutely unwilling to cede control to a first line responder that they, um, I, I think somewhere in my thesis, I, I, I quote uh, supervisors say, hold what you got till I get there. Uh, in my opinion, in a, in a chaotic event, that is completely uh, unacceptable. Uh, the response must continue. We must move forward to try to gain control of a, of a chaotic event. How do you see the implementation of this uh, conceptual framework? Is it something that needs to be uh, driven from the policy level, or is it something that can sort of happen uh, in an impromptu fashion in the field? I, I think uh, the way you phrase the question is exactly the nexus for my thesis. I think what I've tried to do is to codify what already occurs. So the policymaker will have to accept the framework and acknowledge that it exists and be willing to allow it to happen. Uh, at that point, the frontline responders are then empowered uh, to take the steps that, quite honestly, that they've already been doing. Uh, I call it the dirty little secret. It happens. Uh, we, we just have to capture it. Uh, provide it some operating parameters and framework uh, to get maximum effectiveness. Uh, f the first response community and, and uh, law enforcement, firefighting, emergency management, it's, it's permeated by acronyms. Uh, you've proposed adding another acronym to our, our lexicon, uh, REACT. Can you talk to us a little bit about uh, what that acronym means and, and how it can be implemented in the field? REACT, it, it, I understand the aversion to acronyms. Uh, I, I understand the, the desire for plain English. Uh, but when you boil down emergency response, we're reacting to something that happened, reacting uh, to an event, reacting to a call for service. So it, 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 it kind of naturally flowed. Um, the, the first thing that we have to do to engage in a crisis is to respond. We have to get there. There, there are some question as to uh, how we dispatch officers or if they self-dispatch. Uh, I, I address that in the thesis. I want, I want my responders to respond, particularly in a chaotic situation. This is not for your normal everyday cases uh, that we have certain protocols to, to uh, use. 
the next thing we need them to do is to engage. The engagement factor is while you're en route, start collecting information, start using all your senses, uh, listen to the other officers that are responding, listen to the firefighters, the paramedics, any and all information is valuable. Um, then we need you to act, and act is more of a, um, I'd like to say an action verb. It's something positive, it's taking a step. If you don't know exactly what you're doing, you can see certain things happening right in front of you, you need to take steps to address that. Uh, a police department, we say serve and protect. Well, if you see lives that you need to protect, I want you to protect those. You don't need me to tell you to protect those lives. Firefighters, if they see fire, they don't need a, a, a battalion chief or a district chief to tell them, hey, put the fire out. Uh, there are certain uh, skills that they do on a regular basis that we need them to do. Uh, critical component after that is, is the C, which is communicate. You've got to tell people, hey, I'm here. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm, in, I'm, I'm working uh, so for the accountability, because that's the biggest issue that people have a concern with is that, well, if I allow people to self-dispatch, I don't know who's there, I don't know how many officers I have on scene. So at some point in time when, when things settle down, it's incumbent on your responders to let, let somebody know where they are, uh, obviously the command post or the incident commander. And then ultimately when we gain control of the event, we're going to transition. Uh, we're going to transition to a, uh, a canned plan, if you will. We know how to respond to things. We're very good at certain responses. Once we move a chaotic event to uh, a situation that's under control, then we're going to transition to that normal framework that we're quite good at operating under. Uh, and, and that's the idea. People understand and can remember something simple like React. Uh, hopefully they can understand the, uh, uh, what I'm proposing. I, I think it's absolutely fascinating, and it's one of those things, uh, this framework that's sort of been hidden in plain sight for most of the first response community. And to be able to have it as a conceptual framework uh, visualization or, or something uh, through an acronym uh, is really almost uh, groundbreaking, I think, in terms of how we're going to be able to, to address the taboo of, of self-dispatch. Um, through the course of your research, Dave, was there anything that really surprised you or that you weren't expecting to find uh, through, through the, the use of your case studies? There's quite a bit of uh, research on decision-making in the mind of first responders uh, that I, I was not aware of, that I hadn't looked at, that I hadn't read. And so, there, so I think the, the, the topic of emergent decision-making is out there uh, and people are trying to figure it out. I don't necessarily think I'm, I'm undertaking any groundbreaking research. I think I'm, uh, I, I think your point of, of hidden in plain sight is, is absolutely uh, accurate that uh, I, I'm, I'm taking something that many people will say, well, yeah, we, we know that that's what we do and, and trying to put it into uh, a little bit more of an academic uh, presentation uh, I, I, I don't think it's just, this is uh, going to change the paradigm. I think emergency responders are going to say, this is what we've been doing all along. Uh, you, you just uh, came up a way to put it in a box and, and sell it to us, perhaps. Well, I think that's important. You're in a command position, David, in your home police department. Uh, and you mentioned that this is something that officers are already doing already. Is this something, though, that you think you can take packaged as it is, as, as you've packaged it in your thesis, and start implementing back home? I think some of the uh, protocols that I'm suggesting have already been implemented subtly as far as a, um, a rigorous training program. I think uh, that will take some time to implement. Uh, this program has been an 18-month program. I've been a supervisor for nearly 18 years, and some of, some of the concept that I've, that I've put forth is, has emerged through my leadership and my experience with other leaders. Uh, I expect my officers to respond. I expect them to engage. Uh, and I uh, articulate that to them. Uh, and I've had great success operating in that, in that fashion. Uh, so uh, I think short term, it, it may be a little difficult to uh, immediately uh, apply the framework. I think long term, uh, I, I think I'll have success in the remainder of my career uh, enabling officers and, and providing them a, a framework for, for emergent decision making.
Excellent. Well, I, 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 I do think, David, that this work is, is uh, groundbreaking, if not totally unheard of in uh, the first response field. Uh, the way you've certainly framed it and packaged it uh, is unique and I think offers a lot of value to, to the first response community. Uh, and thank you for sharing it and being with us here today. Thanks for having me.